My grandmother was so pure of heart that when her brother came to her with four little baby geese that had been orphaned, of course she took them in. She made a home for them in her suburban backyard. She cleaned out her garden shed so that they would have shelter. And in her great grandmother wisdom, she decided that they should be named the Uchis. And so every day she'd run into her backyard and yell, Uchis! And these four little baby geese would come a running and they'd follow my grandmother all through the backyard all day long. She cared for the geese for two whole years. And then when they were big enough and strong enough, she and her brother took them back to her brother's farm. And they watched carefully as the Uchis joined a flock of geese and gently they all took off into the sky. <laughs> I'm Nicole from Arts Place, and this is the storytelling video series. I love stories, and I believe that stories hold magic. And I think in these very difficult times, it's important for us to remember the magic of our own stories. In each video, I'll share a storytelling tip, and then I'll tell a story for your joy and amusement. This week's storytelling tip is love your ancestors. Now, by ancestors, I mean the kind caregivers and mentors who came before us, our elders. You might be related to your ancestors in this context or, or not, it's all good. And I use the word love rather than learn or talk about because I feel like that denotes respect. Respect for your ancestors, but also respect for their stories and respect for how those stories are told, how and when those stories are told. Some stories uh, are just for your ears only, only for that moment. And it's good to ask the person telling the story if, if that is so, is it, is it just for that moment? Uh, some stories are sacred and only to be told in certain contexts at certain times. And some stories, when you receive them, they become your responsibility. Your, it's your gift then to carry that story forward and to share it with other people, maybe share it for future generations in your family. And what do I mean by a story? Now, a story can be a simple anecdote, like the one with which I started this video, but a story can also become much more complex, embellished by your creativity as you fill in the scene, as you add in your own uh, energy to creating and weaving a story that has uh, meaning. I remember the day that I asked my grandmother, Nana, uh, please, would you tell me a story about your experience in the war? Tell me about, tell me about, please tell me about. That's a good way to gently and kindly ask one of your ancestors or your elders to share their story. Uh, and my grandmother agreed to tell me some of her stories. She let me record them and she, she gave me the gift to carry them forward and to share them with others. And this was one of her stories. In World War II, my grandmother lived in a small village in Nazi-occupied Holland. Now, these were different times. They had lots of difficulty getting the simple things that they needed to live day to day in their home. There was my grandmother with three small children, a couple of them in diapers, and she couldn't even get soap. Ugh, can you imagine that? Gosh. And, uh, in these times, it was usual for the Nazi soldiers to go house to house and search for contraband. Contraband, now that's something that you're not supposed to have or not allowed to have. And one thing that was strictly contraband was radios. Now, this is, this is before Wi-Fi and cell phones and television now. The radio was the way in which you could hear stories. You could hear news of the Allied forces. You could hear how the war was going in other places. With a radio, you could have hope. Now, uh, in my grandmother's family, they had a radio, but it was very dangerous. Of course, if you were caught with it, then, then the whole family could get in trouble. So it happened that one day my grandmother's brother came to her house and he said, look, you, you've been taking care of this radio for, for long enough. You know, golly, I'd, I, I'd, I'd feel horrible if you were caught with it. So, so let me take the radio now. I will hide it at my house for some time, okay? And my grandmother agreed, and she handed the radio to her brother. And just as he was about to go out the front door, there, down the street, came the Nazi soldiers, knocking on people's doors, going house from house, searching for contraband. 
my grandmother's brother froze. But my grandmother said, no problem. I'll hide the radio in a place where those men will never look. That's what she said. And she grabbed the radio and she tucked it away. So when the soldiers came and they knocked on her door, she let them in very politely. They searched her whole house. They searched the kitchen, they searched the bedroom, they searched the cellar, they looked everywhere and they left without finding any contraband. Oh, well, her brother was so relieved once they left he, and he came up to her and he said, where, where did you hide the radio? And my grandmother said again, I hid it in a place where no man would ever look. And then she showed her brother that she had hid the radio in a basket underneath layers and layers of dirty, poopy baby diapers. A place where, according to my grandmother, no man would ever look. Now, I know that in modern times, of course, there are so many wonderful fathers and caregivers who would absolutely be responsible for watching, washing lots of poopy diapers without soap, but back in my grandmother's day, that was all on her. So, you know, she, she knew well the place to hide the radio, and I'm so glad that she did. Love to my grandmother on the other side. My grandmother's heart was so pure that on the day of her funeral, Hundreds of Canada geese lined the roadways like an honor guard as her family passed to go to the cemetery. And as we got over our cars and we looked back at that beautiful line of Canada geese, we said, do you see them? I see them. The Uchis came. The Uchis came to see her off. Ah, love to the Uchis. Love to my grandmother. Love to you out there. Love to our ancestors.